What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Wiki Good Sports, and welcome back to the villa, the villa villa. And we're here with our host, Aaron. Aaron, how you doing? I'm doing well, Brian. It was a good weekend for Villa. Yes, definitely got a got a W here, rising up the ranks in the Premier League. Heck yeah! Again, I don't want to take all the credit, but since we started this show, mm-hmm. Austin Villa's been doing good. I'd been say so. Good. Yeah, no, I it's definitely the show. It's yes, it's not because they've gotten themselves an extremely good coach who's a serial mm-hmm. winner, not nothing like that. It's it's the podcast. Yeah, they got the coach after yeah. we started the show. So they saw the show and they're like, we need to step up our game. We're gonna be talking about us <laughs> each and every week. As far as I'm concerned, I, that's what happened. But uh yeah, what what did you see in this game versus Southampton? Um so Unai changed his tactics up a little bit for this particular game. Um, he has been implementing a 4-4-2. Um, he changed it to a 4-4-1-1. Um, so attacker and then another attacker below him, attacking midfielder typically. Um, I think it was mostly due to the fact that Uwe wanted to slow down um, James Ward-Prowse, who is a free kick threat. I mean, the guy can – he's – I'm going to say it here. He's better than Beckham when he bends it. It is incredible. If you ever get to watch his okay. goals, they're awesome. Big big words for for the uh, former superstar, former MLS player. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> he was good there too. He also yeah. bent it like Beckham there. Now I'm pretty sure MLS owner of a of a team. So yeah, yes, he is. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, they also wanted, to, I think, to stop a dozy's. Uh, speed threat so um, is kind of like a preemptive measure um, I thought they fill up played a little bit slow um, in this particular game but I think uh, they were trying to possess more control of the game than more of an open-ended game in this particular match um, Villa did have a scary moment though yeah, so I heard I heard about that. Um, but at least at least there's the replay here, the the VAR or VAR. Is it is, which one is it? The VAR or VAR? Uh, it's a lot an of, acronym, so it's gonna be VAR. Yeah, I was gonna say a lot of people yeah. like the VAR. If you yeah. mock it, it's VAR. Okay, yeah. So when, <laughs> when it goes against your team, VAR got it. Yes. All right, I can work with that. Um. So Villa napped off for a half a second. Uh, and a cross came in. It was a, it, you could kind of feel the build of play work up in Southampton's favor. And I was like, oh man, we need to clear this or else we're, we're toast. And, uh, luckily a, uh, offsides called from the VAR, uh, showed that, um, who was it? Che Adams was offside. Uh, the goal did not stand in this particular incident. Um, which is clutch for us because there was so many times where uh, we were coming up back from the Premier League that it would just be like, VAR sucks. VAR sucks. We aren't getting the VAR calls. And this just was right. brutal. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely good Good there, you know. Um, helped, helped Villa out. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Um, we... <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's That's okay. Like, yeah, it helped him out, and then I didn't have much more to add. So I was like, "No, you're gonna, right." Gonna stop. It, eventually, it did. Uh, there was a goal in the second half, the only goal of this game um, that wasn't chopped off. Mm-hmm. Uh, VAR got involved. Um, it, it was a close call, but uh, Ali was on side. Um, it was a very good set piece take from. Uh, Douglas Louise, who has been a changed man since Unai has come. I, all of the previous managers have been playing him wrong, and they've been playing him as a, uh, a deep line playmaker or even a ball winning at uh, defender kind of deal. This guy needs to play up more. He needs to go and get into involved in attack. There was this one pass he had early on from Bailey that I, I can't explain it. I will explain it. <laughs> it, okay. it came it came to his foot and his back was 
away from goal and he was able to just spin swivel spin it and lay it off to uh i think it was ramsey and it, it was so gorgeous i was like yes this is the brazilian we've always wanted Oh man! So yeah, um, obviously that seven seventy seventh minute goal. Mm-hmm. Um, for the rest of that game, how how was the play? Was there any any doubt? Anything controversial? Anything like um, that? There was some doubt because Southampton always seemed to play very well against us. In fact, they have a better uh, record against us. I think they're nine. So I'm not sure the draw and four mm-hmm. losses. So, you know, I, there's always a shred of doubt. Plus a team that's in the bottom half always wants to try to keep pushing. And um, Nathaniel Jones uh, has come in uh, with the same kind of style that he has, um, where he likes to change and change tactics throughout the game, which is, you know, is beneficial. Um for a club if they have the players who are going to be quality to keep you up. But um, this this game um, was a decent game for Villa. They had good attacking forward play. Um, the attacking balls that were played into the box were uh, from different angles. They were from deep crosses. They were from – they were low crosses uh, from the byline. It was, it was nice to see a mix-up of – how they're going to get the ball in the box and how they were going to score. So I think in this particular game, even though we only scored one goal, it was still uh, a good game for the attacking side here. Right, right. So that brings Villa to 28 points on the season. They're currently in 11th place. How are you feeling? Because obviously started out kind of slow, fired the manager, but uh, how are you feeling right now? Uh, Joyous. Elate, elated is that probably the right word as well yeah i'm not i'm not a wordsmith uh yeah, that's <laughs> no i feel great because you know it was we were in relegation zone when it, the firing happened and then we we hire emory and we we're like okay we got ourselves a really good coach but what is he going to do with the players we have some quality players we and some that are underperforming and this guy just knows how to take players and make that mindset click them, make it click them just, and that's what we're seeing. We're seeing them rocket up the table. And I think they've taken the most points um, since Unai has been hired. I want to say, I can't can't quite remember, which is incredible. More points than Arsenal have taken. Yeah. Hey, don't let Red hear that. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) I'm going to have to ask him what his thoughts on that are tomorrow. (laughs) His thoughts are uh, Villa have played one more game. Than- <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair point. Uh, if you want to hear more banter between Aaron and Rhett about the teams, check out Swinging at Shins, their Premier League podcast. Yeah, definitely. We're going to definitely talk about more in-depth EPL stuff, uh, more table talk. Um, transfers will probably will happen, especially with the window closing up here soon. Um, and you know, just all sorts of goodies that are happening and news and tidbits and stuff like that. So, yeah. Well, on on that note and on the note of like rocketing up the table, presumably they're going to be buyers here in this transfer window. Um, what are you thinking? What are you hearing? What are people saying? There's conjecture rumor everywhere. I'm sure like most sports mm-hmm. at this time of the year. So uh, I guess what's interesting that you think could potentially be realistic. Um, so we have been attached to uh, Musa Dembele, which is a striker from uh, Lyon. Uh, he is set to walk. Um, he'll be a free agent, which means we'll get him on a, free bid we don't have to bid anything give that team um which means we could get them cheaply we i've seen a number throw out around three million and if we get us if we get somebody of that caliber for three million i'm okay with that um do i think it's going to happen probably not i think we'll probably try to get them during the summer window on a free contract um we've been attached to uh luis enriquez enrique uh real betis um 
this guy, he's only 22 or 20 years old, somewhere in that ballpark. Very young kids we're going after right now, which sets a foundation. You know, we always want those youth kids to, you know, set a precedence. Um, he's rated for 20 million on transfer market. Uh, Real Betis wants 60 million. That's a little, a uh, little bit of a discrepancy there. Do you think that's a fair price? Do you think that's a price that Villa would pay for him? Or I don't. No, I don't think Villa would pay for him. That's kind of like, you know, when a tradesperson tells you that this is going to be how much it is, and they give you such a high number that yeah. it's like, either you get it. Or you don't get the job. Either you get it and you get mm -hmm. paid a bunch of money, or you don't get it and you didn't want it anyway. Right. That's, yeah. that's what this is. It's kind of scaring them away tactics. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't. There's no way they're paying sixty for him. So, mm -hmm. uh, the next name uh, we've been tied to is uh, Gwenduzi, who has played under Unai when they were together at Arsenal. Um, he was a little bit of a headache then, and I kind of under uh, understating headache at the time. He was really a big headache. Um, he has. It seems that he has shown more maturity as the ages have turned here. Um, he's. I think he was only eight, nineteen, twenty, nineteen or twenty. I want to say so young. You know, you're gonna have these me me mentality. Uh, right. I haven't quite seen a number for this one. I wouldn't be shocked if it was around the 35 million mark, which is for a 23 year old, three, 23 year old. You know, it's, it's not out of the realm of possibilities. I think this one might happen more so than the rest of these guys because he wants, he, I, I think he actually wants to replace him again, to be honest. Um, or try to see McGinn out the door in the next couple of years. Um, there's another striker that we've been attached to um, from Athletic Balboa, Nico Williams. Um, they did actually trigger his release clause. So a release clause is like um, you set a price on a player and uh, – you don't have to bid above that number. You can trigger that release clause and whatever that number is, is whatever it is. Right. Okay. Um, you can bid under that number. You don't have to pay whatever this number is. This particular number is 45 million. So they could have been like, yeah, we want 35 for him, mm -hmm. but um, they wouldn't have to pay over 45. Um, and this is in contracts. This is in your, the per, personal player contract this isn't like a a thing and also spanish clubs are really weird like all their players have to have a release clause too it's super weird but yeah that is very weird yeah um he actually turned down the opportunity to want to come he was offered allegedly 120 thousand a week to come and play pretty good pretty good yeah. work if you can get it I'd say so. Uh, he's another 20 year old. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe he doesn't come this year and he might go back next year and try to get or next summer and try to get him. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, we don't ever think about the fact that players have to move. They have to relocate their entire life, of what they've built and put it into a different country or a different place yeah. in general. So you know, it affects their lives as well. So I'm not surprised that this doesn't happen. Um, and then there's this kid that they've been keeping tabs on. And if you really want to clip people, the, listen to me say this last name. Okay. Yeah. I can get through Giannis. Yep. Okay. Uh, his last name, and I'm not trying to butcher this on purpose, people. Mm -hmm. It's Constantileus. Constantileus. Okay. Attacking midfielder. He's 19 years old. They're going to try to keep tabs on him. Other clubs mm -hmm. around the EPL have also been keeping tabs on him. Um, it's probably another player that they'll go out in the summer and get. Um, so really it comes down to, I think they'll, they'll try to get Guendouzi this window. Um, and they'll, I think they'll want to go out and get a striker because they just did sell Danny Ings for 12 million mm -hmm. um, plus three. If West Ham stay up, um, 
hopefully I'd like to see because they've been trimming their squad another couple players in. And Fabrizio Romano thinks they're going to get another couple players in too, yeah. which is a really big – he's a really big transfer guy, soccer news kind of guy. Cool. So any of those players that you particularly would want? Um, Guendouzi for sure, Nico Williams. Um, I would take Musa Dembele on a free – um, Luis Enrique is way too much for me, and uh, Giannis Constantilius um, is probably a, a next summer buy too. Right? Yeah. Give 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 us time to learn his name. Um, <laughs> gonna have to go to the Greek. Thing. I'm gonna have to go to the Greek league and l- watch mm. how they pronounce his name. Yeah. If there's any Greek, uh, you know, viewers, listeners that want to like drop a comment. The phonetic spelling that'd be really Lee. tight, yeah. Especially <laughs> if a week from now we're talking about him being on the team, so yeah, now, uh, yeah, but yeah. So before the show started, you said that the window closes one week from today when we're recording yep. here on Tuesday. So in the next episode, we'll know we'll have uh some news to talk about, hopefully, at least here, but uh. Yeah, anything else you wanted to talk about before we get on out of here? Um, well, we got the Way West stand for Rhett. He does uh Ast- Ooh, he does not do Aston Villa. That's me. Yes. He does <laughs> Arsenal, the top table team here. Mm-hmm. Um, which also, quick second, I want to point out for everybody and everybody at Sky Sports News for pooping on Villa for the fact that they are at eleventh and they try to make note of the fact that we were at the bottom. We are three points away from being in top six. Sixth. Yeah. yeah. And sixth, depending on goal differential. Like, sure. Um, realistically, we could sit uh, seventh. Only three p- points, which is great. And then we're actually 10 points out of the bottom seven. So yeah. turn around. It's really has been. And, uh, Ish, tough for those bottom three. I'll let you and Rhett dissect that on the on swinging its shins more, but uh, oof. Yeah, tough, tough for yeah, especially Everton. <laughs> right, uh, it's been dismal there. Oh man, but yeah. So, like you said, of course, a few times. Please check out Swinging Its Shins, the Premier League podcast, hosted by Aaron and Rhett. Very good. Um, it's going to be the first link in the description down below to the YouTube channel. And then you can check out there. They're also on all the podcast services, much like much like we are here. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at the Fake Mars. We may our, our channels on Twitter at We Good Sport or WG Everything Instagram We Good Sports. Twitch dot Twitch Twitch at Twitch TV slash We Could Get Everything. And on TikTok, search We Could Get Sports. Search We Could Get Everything. Aaron, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Brian. And we'll see you all in the next one.